iron and fire, timber and rail. The Colorado Midland forged the line, settled the towns, and helped introduce the world to the Wild West. The mighty Midland and the towns it built. Charlie, to think back in 1859, this shiny nugget sparked a new chapter for Colorado. That's right, Christy. And with the discovery of gold, came the genius. Calculated risks of these iron pioneers that dared to achieve something that's just never been done before. Build a standard gauge railroad that pierced the Rockies and climbed the heights over 11,000 feet. Blasted through three mountain ranges, endured blizzards and avalanches that buried the line for weeks. To the painter that waited for them at the end of the line. So, witness the triumphant tragedy of the Colorado Midland Railroad. And what a tale this will be. We'll catch up with Charlie and Christy as well as the Ute Pass Historical Society and some unique train historians a little farther down the line. Now, the Colorado Midland was not the first railroad to make tracks in the state of Colorado. That was made possible by the transcontinental Union Pacific that reached the state in 1867. In fact, since the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, movement to settle the West began, and by 1830, the first tracks were laid in the U.S. The next evolution of transportation began. Over the following 20 years, nearly 9,000 miles of tracks were built in America. Industry and population centers began to rise up around the terminal stations of railroads in major cities like Chicago and Salt Lake City. The combination of the railways, the California Gold Rush, and the Industrial Revolution were the catalyst to the expansion of the West. And when the Pikes Peak or Bust Gold Rush hit Colorado, the trains came too. Several railroad lines competed in Colorado not only to reach the mines, but also the coal fields, a key element which fueled the mighty engine of the steam train. <laughs> 